Welcome. So, um, oh no, no, my, my monitor froze. I'm not certain if I'm not streaming or not. <laughs> that is not good. Uh, um, cool. Yeah, well, I got a notification. I don't see what I'm doing, but that's uh, great. Um, well, that's a good start. So, oh, welcome to my stream. Um, so today we will do a little bit something different uh, than last streams. So the Warren Zero is, I mean, it's not done. Um, there's still a couple of things I want to improve, but uh, it's in a state where I can use it uh, and it's, it's, it's really nice to use it. So I want to park that now for a couple of uh, weeks and um, do a couple of other things. And this week we will start with uh, fixing my monitor because now <laughs> I need to see what I'm doing. Give me a second to, to reset that. Um, that's not a good start. That's not a good start. Let's see. Okay, it's super laggy. I think it should work. Let's hope it works. Hi, Ronik. Um, I'm no, I'm not upgrading my streaming setup. Uh, this is the camera that usually is here. Um, because I'm doing a little bit different stuff today. Um, let me ju maybe just let me let me explain what we're doing, and then. Um, I, uh, you will understand why I'm swapping around stuff. So let's just come to the top view. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're building a shortcut keyboard. Um, this is an open source design um, by the gentleman that you will see here on the, on the right. Um, I, I forgot his name. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Um, uh, but yeah, he designed this keyboard and he made a very beautiful YouTube video about it. Um, I linked it in the description under the stream. You should definitely check it out. It's a really cool, like, quality video, like, really nice to watch and a really cool design. Um, I wanted to make one of those for one. Okay, so you're, you're aware, so... <laughs> um, yeah, so I ordered the, all the parts we need for that. And basically what it is, it's just a shortcut keyboard. So it's a little keyboard with uh, mechanical switches. And um, yeah, so my goal is to like, it's printed. Um, I think in original design, he bought the keycaps, but I also printed those. It's kind of like a proof of concept I'm printed here. Um, we will dive into that later. Um, I think today my goal is to solder the PCBs. Um, I got 10 of those from PCBWay. Um, that's basically a uh, link under his video. Um, you basically, it's pre-configured, you go to the link, you can buy them. I think he gets a, a small, like, kickback from, from the ordering those. Um, so it's really cool. Um, how much do, does PCB cost? Um, they're actually super cheap. So I went with the whole stack, like that's 10. Uh, the reason is that the price for one and the price for 10 was exactly the same. Uh, so I figured like, yeah. <laughs> Let's just go for that. Um, I think I paid in total, including shipping to the EU, um, 17 euros. So like, yeah, same same dollars. Uh, and then I had to pay like six euros in import duties, uh, which was five euros handling fee and one euro the actual import duties. Um, so it's actually quite cheap. Um, I'm not quite sure if I got some like first time customer discount, um, but yeah, super cheap. Like. And like, those are like high quality PCBs. Like I'm not quite sure, I'm not an expert in PCBs, but this stack is heavy. Like you also can't hear it, but if I drop that, it's, it's like, it's a solid, it's a solid PCB. Like normally like, I'm like, this weighs more than a populated Raspberry. Now maybe not a Raspberry Pi, but more than populated Arduino Uno, I would say that's like, 25 grams maybe like this is really heavy like it's a nice pcb i wish it would be black i didn't pay attention but um this is really nice um so yeah, while we're here like so I, we have the pcbs of course um i ordered parts um i ordered parts for three of those um that was just like for me like the 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 not a break even point, but like economical point of ordering things because like if you order parts i ordered a digi key um, that's also um, in the Instructables he published. Um, let's actually go there for a second. 
Uh, so yeah, this is a YouTube video. And the name is Salim Ben Buziana. I'm totally bad for that, sorry. But yeah, check that out, it's a really cool video. Uh, he also posted a new video, like super recently, about like a space mouse. So I, I, I might be tempted to build that as well. Um, but he also has Instructables, uh, which I guess we will kind of use as a rough like guideline to, to build that thing. Um, and here's a parts list uh, where you basically, yeah, the, the PCBWay link brings you directly to PCBWay and it's like pre-configured, like you can directly add it to the card. In the pictures it's black or like brownish, mine turned out green, um, but yeah, not a big deal. And uh, then basically you see all the DigiKey links here. So these are all the parts I got. Um, there was one issue though, the level shifter that is linked here is um, no longer um, available. Like yeah, you, you can't add it anymore to the to uh, basket. Uh, so I used a different one. I have no clue about the stuff, so I hope I show something right. Um, I have basically everything to build one or a similar one except for a PCB. Yeah, just ordered a PCB. Um, it just took quite a while for me to arrive. Like, um, the shipping itself was kind of okay. It took like two-ish weeks. Um, but I was like at the customs for another two weeks. Um, so that took quite quite some time. So yeah, um, so that's all credit to him. Um, I think it's a really, really cool design. And I'm really happy uh, to build a couple <laughs> of those. Um, Icon, uh, can wire, but mine is not great at soldering. Yeah, well, I'm not great at soldering either. So um, it's the first time I'm doing SMD soldering. Um, I did like a really quick test. Like I soldered like one capacitor or wait, that's a resistor and a capacitor. No, wait, that's diode, resistor and the level shifter. I did it yesterday just to play around. I desoldered them a couple of times. Uh, just so this, this one is busted basically. Um, but yeah, my soldering skills are really bad, so let's see how it goes. Yeah, let's quickly go through the parts we have, maybe. So, um, they all come packaged in those reels. It's basically like... Uh, comes in those little, like, like I, I don't even know what they're called, but like they're little, like, things and there's like a... Um, some, some foil on top you have to peel off. So that's how they come. Um, so these are the level shifters. And let me actually right away. So I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, um, but then obviously this, this stuff is tiny. So um, why have the camera here now? Circle back to the, to the, to the setup upgrade. Um, I have a different lens here, which should allow us to, to help me make you see. So, don't do this at home, but let's quickly swap the lens and then for the soldering and parts section, I think we will start with soldering. We will have everything a little bit bigger. <laughs> um, so yeah, these are the Neopix LDs as a SMD package, so we will solder those. That will actually be the hard part. <laughs> so we have those. Um, then we have the little, little level shifters. Um, the level shifter is used to translate the logic from the uh, controller. Let's actually start with the controller or continue with the controller uh, to the NeoPixels. So NeoPixels need 5 volt logic, uh, but this uh, controller board we have here uses 3.3 volt logic. Um, this one is made by Adafruit, has USB-C, so I'm very happy about that. And yeah, it's called KB2040. Um, KB2040, and this will be the brains of our operation. So this has 3.3 volt logic, but the NeoPixels need 5 volt logic, so we have this level shifter basically to shift from 3.3 to 5 volt. Um, then we have a mystery package here. Um, these are, I think, diode. Um, quite a number of those, because every single switch needs a diode. I don't know why, but that's how it's designed, <laughs> so we do it this way. Um, the main problem for those is um, they have an orientation, like a polarity. And it's really, really difficult for me to see the polarity because it's like, for me, I, like with my eyes, 
It's just, it's super, super, super tiny. Um, if you think your soldering skills are bad, you should see mine. <laughs> well, you will be the judge of that. <laughs> you will see mine and then you can compare. So, uh, level shifter, then... Yeah, these are resistors. Um, same deal, they come in those like, like hey, I think it's called cut and tape or something. So yeah, resistors, uh, we need those for the LEDs, I think. It's kind of like an interesting story, so I obviously don't need many of those. Um, but often if you order those parts, so A, you should order more than you need. I actually only ordered five level shifters, which I already regret. I should have just ordered like five, maybe 10 or something. But basically like it's sometimes it's cheaper to order 20 than order five or something like that. Like you get, it's actually like ordering five, it's like, a euro and then ordering 20 is like 50 cents. Quite interesting how it works like with quantity for those. Um, and then last but not least, we have capacitors, which should be this one here. I tried to keep them in the bags because the bags are labeled. So these are the capacitors and like for me, this looks pretty much the same. <laughs> so we need to keep that straight. Cool, so those are the parts. Um, you're looking for all the, like, now I'm zoomed in, so, yeah. But yeah, looking at this entire stack here, um, that was 50 euros. So total cost for me basically was, uh, the boards were, uh, yeah, 20, 20, let's say just 20 for easy calculation. Um, the parts were like 50. Um, I got the switches from a friend for free. So that was, that was good. I pay, uh, pay him with one of those in the assembled form. Um, so for me, the total cost excluding filament now would be around 70 euros for three. Uh, if I would now do more, like basically every, the, the expensive part in the end is the controller because each of them is, uh, I think, eight euros or something, eight, nine euros. So that's really what's driving the cost. The rest of the parts is really, really cheap in the end. Uh, I think the level shifter is the most, like LEDs are quite expensive as well. They're like five one euro per piece, we need four for one. Um, so yeah, I think like the controller is the most expensive part. Um, so I think like you can build one for, let's say like 20 euros per piece at reasonable scale. Yeah, that is roughly what I pay, right? Like a three for 70. So, I mean, like those uh, are relatively cheap if you get them from AliExpress. Cool, I think we need to go a little bit more up here. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, also, I was looking at AliExpress and the form of the zero kits is now free shipping, so it's only 379 for an entire kit. Oh, that's super cheap. 379 for an entire kit is nice. Um, I'm not quite sure how good the form bot kit is, though. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Ballistic tech build, maybe it was a form bot kit, but don't quote me on that. Let's see, uh, I need to be a little bit higher. Why doesn't it focus? I tried that before streaming, it worked totally fine. Mm. Well, I wonder why it doesn't focus anymore. One second. Let me fight with technology. Let me quickly restart the camera. I tried this multiple times for stream and it worked always. But it seems like it doesn't autofocus anymore. Oh, maybe, I, oh, I was too far away. Okay, I see. So uh, you see it like here on the, on, on, on this cam, uh, frame up here. I use those like uh, extension tubes here and that messes with the focus systems. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Uh, um, just a few small issues, like weird uh, wire length. Yeah, also the LDO kit had a couple of like weirdly uh, sized wires. Um, so I think that's not exclusive to the format kit. Cool, but I, I, I guess we can just like 
start right away with the fun part and solder. Uh, maybe, well, as we know, I have the macro stuff set up. So these were like a couple of iterations of the keycaps I printed. Um, I found those on printable. It's a bit focus hunting. Um, I found those on printables and um, I mean, they're not bad, but they're like printed like on top, which I didn't like. Um, so that's like my iteration at the moment. So they're like flat printers. Um, and they're printed on the V0. Uh, ignore that terrible gray one here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think we won't get to that this uh, stream, but like next stream I want to fully focus on like making those pretty and, and nice. So my goal is to have fully 3D printed. That's it, cool. So then I guess we can kind of like just hop right in. I have some extra light here. I'm really curious to see if this like all works out with this entirely new setup here that I came up with. <laughs> um, but it looks like it works works well. Like you should be like it's almost uh, depending on how big your display is. You see it's in way way bigger uh, than than that I see in real life. Actually, so we have a bit of like a very narrow focus range here. <laughs> I think that's, this should work. Cool. So I'm not quite sure what's the smartest way to start. Maybe let's also move it a little bit closer to me. So that should work, I guess. So I'm not quite sure what's the smartest to, to work on first. Um, so we have some super small components. So here, um, that's where the level shifter goes. Um, and then we have this resistor here, and those are the LEDs. I'm not quite sure about the orientation of the LEDs yet. Um, but maybe... So here's the thing, like, the, I was able to unsolder the capacitors and, and, and resistors and diodes, because they only have two pads. That's no biggie, like, to unsolder. Um, but this uh, level shifter, like, once it's on, I wasn't really able to, to get it off again. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I should do this like first, I, most likely I should do this last. Um, because then that's kind of like, we buy into this uh, PCB. Um, probably start with small components. Yeah, I, I think I will start with the diodes first. Um, but those have also very, very high risk of screwing up because like, let me, let me get one out. Like they're just, let's start with the diodes. But they're just an absolute pain in the ass to, 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 to get the orientation right. So, let me just get one out. Um, so I'm just peeling this off. Maybe I should move it a little bit higher, so if I do something like that, it's still somewhat in focus. So they're quite, quite nasty. Maybe I should drop that. Um, the problem is they have a line on, like they have an orientation. You see on the PCB, there's this arrow and the line, and we kind of need to align that. But the problem is I am having a really, really difficult time to seeing this line. So this one goes on this way. <laughs> so this, like, this is quite, quite annoying. I have a stick back. Um, you can, you just joined in time to see me fail to solder stuff. So, 379. Um, so, it's the first time for me doing this. Let me make sure that I keep this one aligned. Um, so, what I saw on YouTube and what I tried out yesterday, and this is like a really horrible setup, just to get that straight. The solder is way too thick, uh, the tip is way too large, this is this horrific. But basically, what you do is like you heat the pad and then you dab a bit of solder on the pad. Um, and then the idea is to take the component and just melt the solder and move the component in. And this should be now aligned. Like this is a very ugly solder, of course. Um, but the component is aligned with the pad. So now we can basically do the exact same thing on the other side. We heat it up and dab a bit of solder on it, maybe. Uh, 
So, I mean, while this works, closer. Uh, I think this is kind of like the limit what we can do. So this is kind of like the limit and there's already like a little bit of a ball on this side. So that was kind of like what I saw. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess technically this will work. <laughs> is it pretty? Most likely not. Um, I was just about talking the format kit else. We should, yeah. Um, are you seeing the controversy this morning about Bamboo Labs merging Orchestizer back into their repo? No, I did not. Uh, educate me. What, what's happening with uh, with Orca Slicer in Bamboo Labs? So Orca Slicer is already is that? Like, does it now mean that Bamboo? How's it called Bamboo Lab Slicer or Bamboo Slicer? It's not new Orca Slicer, or um, is it now just gone? Let's do the next one. I mean, if I would... Yeah, so if I hold it like this, the side with the hole is the side we want... We want the diode to go. Like, this is the side with the line. And this is really difficult to get them out, but if I... Okay, I already messed up. Too bad. <laughs> if I would get them out in the right orientation, then I wouldn't, like... I know that they're in there all in the same orientation and I wouldn't need to like figure it out for each individually. So this, ah, and I dropped it. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think that the diodes are the worst part. It's really difficult to see. Oh no, my chat connection got disconnected. Oh no. I am offline? Something isn't working. <laughs> okay, I'm not quite sure if my internet connection just died. Okay, I think I'm still online. YouTube Studio says very good connection. Um, sorry for that. But it's like, so. No, uh, not it just merge Orca Slicer changes back down into it. Okay, but what, what's the controversy then? Like if, I mean, Orca Slicer is the open source branch, right? I mean, it shouldn't be a big problem like then for them just to merge it back to their main wrapper, right? Uh, or of my hackers, lock your zero double stream. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit different things now. Um, because building printers is a really expensive side hobby. Um, so now, like this week and next week at least, we do like this here and then, yeah. Let's see if we find other fun things to do as well. <laughs> but there will be more Boron builds um, coming. Okay, this is really ugly. Okay, I think I need to move the solder stuff a little bit closer to me. Like something is up with my Wi-Fi, I think. Um, This should be good. Uh, yeah, the squash to commit history and only have a small note about the Orca size contributions, but people are saying they stole Orca. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So basically in their code base now, it's not properly anymore. Yeah, I think something is up with my internet. 
um, like stuff is cutting in and out. I'm not sure if that um, is also on your side or only on mine, but uh, please let me know in chat if there are like any disruptions in the stream or something. Yeah, yeah, you have to leave a little bit of a gap between the part and the solder. That's not pretty, but should should work. Um, you could also make the same argument saying that Orca stole from Bamboo. Yeah, I think it's like more about the, the commit history being lost. And if it's a squash commit, like basically um, the changes are in the Orco slicer, right? But the, the changes are not linked to the people anymore that made those changes. I think then that's more a problem. Uh, the stream is fine all time. Okay, then I'll just ignore that everything is kind of like breaking on my end. <laughs> um, that's... I have a very weird setup though. So basically I use my iPad, like... Um, uh, everything's running on my MacBook here and I have my iPad here as external display, which runs over Wi-Fi. And that's like crapping out all the time at the moment. So I'm not really seeing what I'm doing. So another attempt on, on getting this out in orientation. And another failure. Okay, that's the correct orientation. Oh, now we put solder there. See? I really wonder whether this works in the end. I think I'll, like, if, um, when I have all the capacitors on, I'll just touch up all the solder points quickly with a bit of flux. it doesn't want to melt the solder, I wonder why. <laughs> um... Hi Jim, I'm pretty sure it's right. Um, the history isn't important since it's about the final code they merged back into their own copy. Yeah, I guess, but if you know, like, if you lose the history, Alex, then, like, the contribution is linked to the people anymore. I think like, that's at least, like, what I could then understand as the, as the controversy. Missed this one. <laughs> this is the orientation. Would be hilarious if I if I sold them on the wrong way. Like all of them. had a lengthy discussion with Scott from Marlin Project and goes into detail of how the benefit of the source exactly in Bamboo did. Full changes from other folks. Okay, yeah. Actually, I still won't have to watch it. Like, um, I had to melt some podcast or like the latest episode on my on my watch list. Uh, I didn't get around yet to take the time and watch it. Um, okay, that should be the first row of very ugly to be honest like seeing the line like i'm, I'm looking right now on, on the display of the camera and here the line is <laughs> it's much easier to see than in real life like, line 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 so that's okay oh yeah next next row Out. 
Okay, this is the correct orientation. Okay. Feels like uh, it's getting easier. I'm not following your entire discussion right now. Um I need to quickly finish this and then catching up. Um, I was back into review in much gear, so uh, I think there's a misunderstanding of OSS and source control amongst the community. Interesting. Okay. I'm really looking forward to not paying attention to the polarity of components. I'm trying to put it on the side. Yeah, this way you get them out. Like if you carefully move them, like flip them over to the side, then you can grab them like that. <laughs> that seems to work quite well. Okay, so this one goes here. Yeah, sometimes it takes a second for the solder to melt, which is odd. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not having like a high quality soldering iron here or something. Okay. Yeah, they, like solder joints don't look don't look pretty, but let me quickly see if I can fix my monitor. Seems like we have another go. Um, yeah, Jim, Jim is the king of plugins. Like, it's basically hard to pick a plugin in a plugin repository where he did not have at least one commit. I try to keep the magic small inside those small dials. I do my best, but um, let's see if they all work in the end. I'll touch them up. I'll touch touch them up later, like all in a row. Um, I used to use Octoprint, but have moved both of my printers to Clipper. Well, they're still Octo Clipper. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, this is disorientation. Let me double check. I dropped it. Yeah, that's correct. This goes in like this. Two rows done, one row left to go. Let me just maybe do it like this. And just tin them up all in one go. That was way faster than doing one by one. Um, okay, let's. Get the next one out. This one goes in this direction. Oh. <laughs> this one won't move. <laughs> And it's like a whole whole discussion going on there. Um, mm. Oh, cool. So, so uh, Jim, you're saying basically that the Octo Clipper uh, plugin basically will get a major upgrade. Then that that's what you mean with the uh, web sockets, right? Last one. <laughs> okay, then let's quickly uh, solder the, the other side and then I will just go like with the depth of flux over all of them just like to make sure that the solder connection is, is a bit nicer. Oh, there's a spare one. Oh, yeah. When I, when I drop one, I think this one fell out. Let me on the side. Like, I have plenty of spares of those. Let's start with this one. so I count it as a win. I do have this, um, let me show it here. So I have this like solar flux thingy. 
um, the plunger broke off, so I kind of like DIY'd it on. Um, but what I would do now is I would just do a little bit, like, I think the amount of solar is relatively high, but... Let me just do like a dab of flux on all of them. And then I would just like re blow them. Yes, let's do them row by row. You didn't see it, but Alex, there's your magic smoke here. <laughs> there's your magic smoke. Sorry, I did it too quickly. I did not move the camera. Let's try again for an extra. So, dab here, dab there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. Let's put it on, on the next row as well. Okay, so let's make sure that's visible this time. It's like special effects. Not all be nice. Like it's 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 quite a bit of solar on them, but that should be should be fine. Um, Jim, uh, kind of. I think it's a separate plugin from Octoclipper, built from scratch. Yeah, okay. I think that makes sense because Octoclipper is quite like it's a very dated plugin. I think right. It's quite old. Um, and it's not really nice to use. I think maybe that's like. I feel like if the integration between Octoprint and Clipper would be nicer, um, many more people would be like using Octoprint um, because at the moment, like there's this like really like link in people's mind between like mainsail, uh, mainsail fluid and Clipper. And like yeah, I think that like, if the integration would be better with Octoprint, like many people would choose Octoprint over mainsail. Like um, I built the V0. And I'm using mainsail at the moment, just to try it out, and I really don't like it. Like, I really don't like it. Um, it disconnects the entire time uh, in the background, basically, and you click buttons, and the UI doesn't tell you that it lost connection. It's really frustrating, and then every time you switch tab and you switch back, it's like initializing again, but then it loses the entire UI state. Um, so it's really frustrating to use. <laughs> um... Uh, he hasn't posted on GitHub yet, so I'm not sure if it's or not. Okay, let's let's see and wait. But it's interesting to, to know that there's work being done. Um, as long as you do not connect it to power, there is no magic smoke. True. Okay, so this is um, standard smoke. Boring smoke. Let's see. For magic smoke, I think we need a little bit more soldering done first. 
Um, it's only running on your instance. Um, it's a keep alive service. Uh, no, I'm not running Sonar on my instance. You mean Sonar Cube? Like, I, I, I know that Sonar Cube is a thing that exists, but that is basically as much as I know about it. Cool. Um, so these are all the dials, I think. I guess... I mean, like, there's not much left, actually. So we have this one... Um, this one resistor here left and then there's this little capacitor next to each of the LEDs and then we have the LEDs left and the level shifter. Uh, I will do the level shifter as the dead last thing because yeah that's then the point of no return <laughs> basically. Um, so for the LEDs uh, we should definitely do the let's do the capacitors next because these are those teeny tiny thingies. Um, let, let me grab them. Let me grab those. Sorry that I can't like switch like from this like macro perspective to like the normal desk setup, so... Can't really show you what I'm doing here. These are capacitors. Sonar is a small keep alive demon for main tail Huh, okay. No, I have to I have to look into that. But like the things like um main sale itself is okay. It's like the browser basically loses the connection to the to the server. Um so I just hope that there's no uh, polarity to those. They are really, really tiny. <laughs> like, look at my tweezers in a size comparison. Man, that's tiny. Um. Oof, okay. I wonder whether I should switch the soldering tip because at this time, point in time, like, let me let me try that. Let me switch the soldering tip. So I have a, I mean, I have basically two available that could fit. I mean, this one is round and bulky. This one is very sharp and pointy. So right now I have like a flat one. Let me try to use this like, actually I, I never used this one, but maybe this is better for those pads. Like this is like appropriately sized, I think. Um, let, let's try that. See how that how it goes. Let's quickly wait for it to heat up. Let's see. Let's see. A little bit more. Let's see. And we have five parallel viewers. I think I never had five people watching at the same time. That's a new record, I think. Hmm, I'm not sure if this is working. No, I don't think this works. I don't think this works. Um, let me quickly grab my scratch PCB. Let's quickly try this here. Uh, 
it's not really like and if I angle it oh you don't see anything if I angle it like this kind of works but not really let's see if I added that of blocks first No, that's not. I mean, it's on now, but it's not. Let's not use this one. Let's stick with the other one. I think that's better. But I would still like start using flux now directly for the soldering. Um, I think that should help to kind of let the solder stick to the, to the pad a bit more. Dropping everything left and right. Try one more. Um, oh, the soldering iron was off. I'm not sure it was off for the small tip, but it didn't have solder, so it must have been on. Let's put the way for it to heat up. Yeah, let's add a bit of flux. looks okay there's not like a little tiny tiny dab of solar on the pad so i think it's fine let's let's roll with that let's take a bit of solar off this pad here um and then there's our tiny capacitor that i kind of forgot so It's kind of on. <laughs> um, I wouldn't trust that, but let's solder the other side and then um, let's um, replot it again later. Okay, there's a bit of flux. I mean, it has solder on both sides. <laughs> uh, I counted that success. I counted that success. Let's do this one. Yeah, let me let me add flux to all of them right away. All on the soldering iron, not on the pad. Okay, adapted now <laughs> from the top, but it's also on. Um, let's actually do the same as we did before. Can we try without the flux?
There's a little bit of solder on there now. Like those pads are so small. And there's a bit of solder on there. Okay, so we now have one fully assembled and three neat capacitors. Oh, they're really easy to lose. So this one goes here. really hard to position those. Okay, that should be fine. Like we need to reload it later. This one goes here. So, oh, this one doesn't want to go on. It's like in a 45 degree angle. <laughs> Let's add a bit of flux so I can reflow that properly. Ah, those are tiny. I hope the LEDs are easier. Okay, this is kind of sketchy, let me try to make this a bit better. I'd rather do like five rows more diodes than that. If you can keep the tiniest bit of solder on the tip of your iron, it will conduct a lot better faster. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I can try to do that. The problem is just like, as soon as I have like solder on there, I feel like it's too much on, on the pad. So there's the last one. This one went way, way better. Okay, then we need to add solder to the other side of those. Let's also add a bit of flux right away. So. Maybe I really just, like I now have solder on the iron. I think if I just dab it a bit, it's already, already good enough. Okay, let's quickly redo the other side. No, it's way too much. Yeah, that's not... Oh! What happened to this one? Didn't I do the other side yet? Hmm. Oh, let's start over with that one. Add a bit of solder. Let me let me quickly clean this, this pad up. 
Uh, I have to leave, have fun. Bye Alex, thanks for checking in. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so we have solar on the pad, quite a bit. And we have solar on one side. And we have sold on the other side. Okay. It's, it's not pretty. It's like it's like a little bridge, like it won't focus, but like, it's not quite on, on, on the PCB, it's floating. Floating over the PCB. I guess it's fine. Um uh, well, here we are. Okay. I call that success. So, if we didn't like solar on any of the diodes the wrong way, I'm quite confident so far. Um, then I guess the next thing would be the LEDs. I mean, we also have this resistor here. Which we could do first. I'm not, it might be better to do the LD first. And just like walk our way like that direction with the components. So let's try to do LD. So for LDs, I'm not quite sure about the orientation. Let me get one out. So here's the LED. see so more at least um i'm not quite sure about the orientation so the board has this little mark over here like on all the leds on one side and the leds turn it over has this little notch on one side so my assumption would be that we have to align those two. Um, that would be minus. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure. So if all the LDs don't work, then we did it the wrong way. <laughs> um, I guess we do this, like those are a little bit difficult because like the pads are on the bottom. They are a bit on the side as well. So I guess we can just do the same same uh, strategy. So let's solder up one pad and then just slide it in. Let's do this one. Okay, so I have solder on one pad. Well, it's on the board, so I count it as success. Let's see. So, this is tricky now. Hmm. It doesn't stick to the thing. Let's try if we can add flux to solve that. It worked. So we need to add add flux to those. Let's 
Sí. Pretty it is not. <laughs> Let me just quickly reflow them. I mean, it's on. It's on, but um, not pretty. I'd assume it, it should work. It should work. Let's do the next one. So we have four LEDs in total. This one. Yeah. Has, oh. There's a notch. Notch is this side and there's a marking so it goes in this this orientation. Let's see. Let's start with this one. Okay. No, it doesn't doesn't want to stick. Let me add a bit more. Bit more solar to the pad. Yeah, no, no, it's on. Okay, also reasonably flush. Yeah, let me let me try to push this a bit down. Not quite flush on the board. Okay, give me a bit of flux there. <laughs> Not getting easier. Oh, awesome! Quite, quite a view. doesn't want to, to go like neatly on. I mean technically it makes contact, but it's not nice. Let's try again again. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm too stupid for this one. Let's see. 
I mean, there's not also solder on, on the LDB already, which doesn't seem to help. Let's, let me try to grab it like this. Maybe we should just use a different LD and write this one up. Okay. Yes, it's a little bit annoying. <laughs> um, the board moving doesn't really help. Let me try to weigh the board, board down a bit. No, it can't work. Okay, it doesn't work. Mm. Let's do a different, different uh, LED for now and return to the there. Start with this one here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Okay, so seemingly um, every component I pick is more difficult than the one before. The problem is I can't grab those LDs properly. Like, if I grab them, they always like lift off the board here we go this one is good okay Whew. let's try to add a bit solar here I'm not sure if it worked It sticks to the soldering iron, but not to the to the pad. Let's try some flux. Yeah. Okay. You really need need the flux for those. This one is, looks kind of okay. Okay, let's do the last one and then let's return to the to the one we failed before. <laughs> okay, so here the notch goes in the opposite direction, so it goes this way. Let's see if I Hold it like this again. Yep, like this was no problem. You didn't see it, but... <laughs> let's... Yeah, let's do one side first. board gets really sticky with all the flux. <laughs> Definitely have to clean it up. Okay, let me quickly reflow the first one. Okay, 
let's uh, try this one again. Let's try this one again. Um, let's clean up the pad first and, and start over. Or maybe, like, if I now put flux on this one, it should be fine. So let's get a fresh LD out. And. It goes on this way. So. Let's see. Yep, that seems to have worked. That seems to have worked. Okay. about <laughs> something not working and then we have to figure out what went wrong because none of those solar joints look uh... look really good all a bit ugly but it's all on so we have capacitors, LEDs, diodes, so all sets the resistor and the level shifter. See, my, my monitor died again. Let me try to plug it in on the other side. Maybe that helps. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so this is all complete. Um, yeah, then let's do the resistor and then the level shifter. Let's find the resistor. So. Those are the diodes. Put this in there. Uh, this says resistor 10,000 ohm. So yeah, I used one on my on my test board. Here it is. Doesn't have polarity, so just parked it over there. Should have gotten like a magnifying glass or something. Like I, I thought I had one that came with my first soldering iron. I couldn't find it. Oh no, I went on, on so smooth and nobody saw it. it really, it's really difficult for me to like line <laughs> board in the camera. Let's see. 
reflow both sides quickly just to make sure everything is nice. Way too much solder, but should be fine. Okay, last one. Um, that was in the same bag as the LEDs. This is so odd. Like, I ordered five of those level shifters. And they sent me like two single ones and a, and, a, and a set of three in like three different bags. It's very odd. So, I mean, this one clearly has orientation, which is appreciated. Um, now that we populate all the things over here, I think it's best to like do this one first and we can slide it in like that. Let's pack it over here. Um, we definitely need lugs for those. Let's see. This looks like it, it worked, but now I'm I'm stupid and did all three at <laughs> once. That was not what I should have done. Um, well, let's try, I guess. Let's add a bit more flux. really hard to grab those. Okay, well it's in position. We have to reflow that uh, for sure, but it's in, in a position where we can solder the other side. Next time let's do one pad. I think it's best to do one of the one of the outer pads first. Reflow the inner ones. I'm just not sure if I bridged them or not. Like... I think I bridged them for sure. It's definitely like a bridge. Um, let's try to, to wick it away. like so small that I'm, I'm really not sure what I'm doing here.
It might be good already, but I, I'm just not sure. I'm really not sure if this is bridging or not. Ah, Fear that I would screw up this one. I think it's just like not properly positioned, like it's a bit shifted. That's the only one I can't really like at all. Okay, let's try again to... <sighs> I feared this would happen. Yeah, it's not properly aligned. Um, well, let's try to get it off, but I'm not quite sure how to do that, to be honest. No, that's one way. <laughs> oh, you didn't see it, but it's just, it exploded basically. Let's clean up the pads. I'm just not sure if this is bridging or not. Like, I, I, I just don't see it. I think it's fine, but... Okay. Let's try again. Let's use flux. Let's do this one first. Okay, so now we have three left. <laughs> For three, I want to build. So. No more room for mistakes. Let's make sure this is perfectly aligned before we solder any other
I'm not sure if it's my tweezers, but like grabbing those is so, so difficult. I'm sorry if I have to move it a little bit closer to me. I really need to see what I'm doing here now. Okay. Looks pretty well lined. Let me actually quickly clean this uh, a little bit up. Now I'm a little bit like nervous, anxious. Let me actually clean the entire board quickly. It's not as sticky and gooey. Yeah, this one is not on at all, this LD here. I'm not confident. Okay. Oh, and it's moved. This makes me even less confident. <laughs> Let me double check. It's aligned as good as it will be. Um, let's flux this all up. Let's, let's do this one. Those should be not good. Not a difficult part. And I'm not putting like a very healthy amount of flux here. Yep, I think it worked. I think that worked. Um, let me clean that a bit. And then I think we have to... I'm not sure. Did this LD move? It doesn't seem like it. Let me clean this up. And then we can see... Man, like... You know, like, you, you watch those, like, board-level repair videos on Lightning and stuff? This looks really easy. And we also have quite crappy equipment. I'm also doing this the first time, which doesn't help for sure. Okay, I think this is fine. Okay. Whew! I think it's fine. Yeah, this LD is definitely loose. I think you can move it. So we have to check that. I 
Okay, the others seem fine. It's just this one that needs a bit more, a bit more love. Let's see. I'll just try to reload it. Now it looks better. Before it was like little balls, and now it's a little slow. Let's do this side as well. Okay. Looks better. Also. This. Okay, then I guess this is, except for the controller, a complete board, right? I'd be so happy if that works. <laughs> My confidence is not all too high, but it should be fine. So, I'm not sure if this one is not an easy part or a hard part. But I guess what we will do is like we will put one here and then one on the opposite side, then we can just work work our way through. So let's at least the paths are bigger. Yeah, it's good. This one is also kind of okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's just work our way through. I'll put a bit of flux on each of them. Six to my soldering iron bar one, which is not quite what I want. Oh, that doesn't work quite as I want it. Create massive solar blocks on each of them. <laughs> that is for sure. Should be fine. Yeah, I think that's a better better approach. If you put the solder here and then kind of like press against it. 
and then I guess we can just refloat them. Oh, there's no salt yet. Okay, so one side is done. Quite a lot of soldier solder per. It, it's it's fine. Should be fine. Okay, then let's do the other side. I think the trick is to heat the pad more and then add the solder. Bit too much. But heat the pad first. And then add the Off camera, sorry. sorry. Okay, I think this is okay. Let's quickly clean this and then. We technically we could try it out, but let's add those first. These are the rotary encoders. to not use the level shifters so these are the rotary encoders Oops. and they basically just clip in, into the board here we have to solder them from the other side let's move this a little bit more up so we have quite a bunch of solar spots here, but they're nice and big, so I'm not very concerned.
This one doesn't want to. Here we go. Okay, let's just do the big ones to anchor it. This is the limit of my soldering iron. It doesn't want to properly melt that. Let's add a bit of flux here. Yeah, it's it's struggling. Bigger tip would, would help. Okay, but this seems to be good now. So let's just double, triple soak this one with heat first. Where I want the solder to be. It's quite hot, so let's quickly let it cool down. Okay, I'll do the other side in the meantime. need only to to kind of like lock it in place <laughs> they're really oh way off camera but they're really ugly but should, should be fine cool so we now have two rotary encoders oh well i mean that was most soldering for now So I guess, technically, if we want to, we can plug it in, right? And then something should happen. Let's see. Let's see. So... I wonder whether I should switch to lens so we can see any magic smoke. Let's quickly do that. See, so that's the board in all its glory. Like those are, are not pretty. Mm. Ah, now my, my display crept out again. Weird. Okay, so 
Are we ready? Well, I see all these. I don't see smoke. I count it as success. But nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Like I think I should see like a, a drive popping up on my machine, but nothing is happening. Um, I did plug it in via USB hub. So let me plug it in directly to the machine. Ah, now something happens. Do you want to connect Raspberry Pi, Pico, Arduino to this Mac? Yes. Okay. Still nothing happening. Like there was a message, but nothing, nothing else. Let's see. And we could see what should happen. That's... I need to quickly reorganize stuff. Like I, I don't see my stuff updating again on the external display, which kind of means I'm a little blind to what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, okay, so you see Chrome. Cool. Um, so we did all the all the soldering. Firmware. Follow this guide from Adafruit to install Circuit Python first. Okay, yeah, well, we didn't do that. That's clearly unlike that. Download the latest version. Um, download. Um, well, we have a KB2040, this one. So we have a UF2, but I'm not sure what UF2 is. You have to bootloader. Hmm. Okay. Let's let me quickly reorganize that a little bit here. So we don't need to solder anymore. So let me just make a little bit more space for myself. And uh, oh, just a bit closer. Okay. Just like this. <laughs> so let's see how to do that. Um, well, we are on a Mac. Which is not not a good sign. Okay, let's, let's just quickly see. Um, nearly all circuit Python must ship with a bootloader called UF2 USB uh, flashing format. That makes installing and updating circuit Python a quick and easy process. Your bootloader is the mode of your board needs to be in for the circuit Python UF2 file you download to work. If you download, um, uh huh. So. Find the reset button on your board. It's a small black button and most of the boards it will be only button available. It's typically labeled reset or RST on the board. Tap this button twice to enter bootloader. Okay, so we connect this. 
we do have two buttons. And I do not see labels. I do not see labels. I mean, we can just try both. <laughs> I just double tap that. Tap the button twice and the wood loader. If it doesn't work on the first try, don't be discouraged. The rhythm of the taps needs to be correct and sometimes takes a few tries. If you have Circuit Playground Express and it's fresh out of the bag, try pressing the button once. Well, it says boot here. On this side it says boot, so... I mean, what is supposed to happen is should m mount a drive. See, I press it twice again. It's really hard to press this button, actually. Just pressing it and waiting for something to happen. So something should show up. Well, it's not. <laughs> Trying different like speeds of pressing that button. But nothing really happening. Well, that's a shame. Let's try the other button. Nothing happening. I mean, the board itself is working, right? Like we have all the LDs and everything, so that seems to be fine. I mean, it would be nice if they just tell you like, hey, press it fast or like this interval or something. Um... You must hold well, to enter the bootloader on an RP2040 button, you must hold down the boot select button while continuing to hold it, press and release the reset button. Continue to hold, okay, so I'm doing the completely wrong thing. So we, wait, again, so we press, you must hold down the boot select button while continuing to hold it, press and release the reset button. Continue to hold the boot select button until the drive appears. Okay, so let's, we press this one, and then I press and release this one. Aha! Instant success. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't quite prepared to show this. Um, let me quickly see if I can... Hey, with a sick tag, uh, you don't have to disconnect, reconnect by pressing. No, so uh, the trick is basically to, um, I could have also shown this. So you hold down this button, you hold it, and then you press and click, the, like you press and release the other button. That was the trick. Uh, and yeah, 
it said it in the in the box below. <laughs> I mean, reading is is a really really good skill. Um, can I wait? Let me add plus screen capture. Well, that's not what I want. Um. It doesn't show me the... Okay, yeah, then I can't show it. Oop, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. Um, let me let me do it in, in, in Visual Studio. Uh, so if I open... So I just... Yes, trust. So yeah, here, here we are on the drive. <laughs> That's a uh, credit. Um, so yeah, there's the info uf2.txt and I downloaded this uf2 file. So I just dropped it in here. I hope this was what I was supposed to do. Let me quickly see. Um, yeah, just drop it there. Now, um, boot drive on your computer. Ah, I, it rebooted, I think. Do you want to connect that or food? Yeah. Oh, nice! Ha! Ah, I mean, that's a shame. Uh, I usually don't want to... Mm -hmm. Screen capture. Uh, okay, I don't get, get around. Okay. Let me... Let me do that. So, um, that's this way. <laughs> Set of assistance. So now it's recognized as a keyboard. Uh, well, I can't hold down the shift key uh, or the key next to the shift key. That's one thing for sure. Um, and it doesn't let me continue. So let me just. I guess that, that's that's all we need. <laughs> so I just want to show that. Um, let me change it back to. Uh, God. Visual Studio. Okay, sorry. That was messy. Okay, align that. Yeah, I, I need to somehow like, I usually don't want to share my entire screen because it's like my only my only machine. Uh, so there's like also like personal stuff on there, which I <laughs> don't want to really stream. Uh, but I need to, to prepare something there. Um, music is loud. Let me, let me tune it on. Let me know if it's better now. Like this is so annoying. Like for some reason, like I always use my iPad as external display, and today it just doesn't work. And having only one display is impossible to to make this work. Like I have no clue what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. That's a, yeah, that's really, really annoying. Um, okay. So, uh, but let's see, like, let me know if the music is now, if it's now better. Um, but I can't have the chat on, on screen because I only have one screen and I... Well, now everything's broken. Um, amazing. Cool, okay. So, let's go back to Chrome. So we did that, and things happened. 
And I think this is all we have to do here. So we completed follow this guide from the other food. Once the board mounts again, we can drag and drop the firmware folder to it. Let's see what the firmware folder is. Um, yeah, now we have a circuit pie. I have to share this, but yeah. This is, this is annoying. Um, Okay, let, let me let me try it again. If I would have two screens, this would be much easier. Okay, let me let me quickly reorganize a little bit of stuff. I need to have OBS, like the, the streaming software, visible at the same time as what I'm doing, otherwise this doesn't work. Okay. Now my iPad works again. Amazing. <laughs> um, then let's change this to display. should show up here exactly so now we have the circuit pie right here and there we have the code pie um actually let's open that in yes so so that's basically now what you see on the right you don't see my full screen try to kind of keep this like some green so we have this code pie from which the world, which I'm fair. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. So let's see. Um, so basically, uh, once the, we drag the bottom of the front fold, okay, so let me quickly. Um, yeah, download the whole thing, right? temporary while testing the board to not knock yourself out. Okay, let's do that.
here's all the references. Okay, so let's do the following. Um, everything is commented out in Woodpie. Let's actually quickly check what's in there. So we have row, column, if not row value storage, just able to use meter. So basically this is a dangerous part, I think. So if you would like have that in there, it would have disabled the speed drive and you would have no chance to, to, to change the code again. Yeah, everything is, is disabled. Um, I didn't say it. You restart the board. So I assume restart the board means unplug and replay. Let's reject that. Um, okay, most likely I should close Studio. This is one of the situations where you really want to safely eject something. <laughs> okay, it's ejected. So... We don't need... Do we need the slide? No, not really. Um... So, we unplug this. And we replug it. I don't see LEDs. That is one thing I, I, I can see say for sure. Stuff changed. Stuff changed. Um, it's also back in the finder. So I see it again. Which I guess is a good sign, but I'm a bit concerned that the LDs don't work. Mm. Well... I'm not quite sure how to debug that, to be honest. Oh! Wait. This is me turning the knob. So, something works. Worst case, we don't have RGB. <laughs> but, like, it's working as a keyboard. Really. That's something. Um. But no LEDs. I mean, potentially it's like one of the solder joints. Or a fry the level shifter. Or the LEDs are in the wrong orientation. So many possibilities. So many possibilities. Um, let's... Double check with Chrome. So he's at the exact same spot that we are. I'm not sure if he shows at some point. Let's check the YouTube video. Um, the orientation of the LEDs. It's a really cool video. You should definitely check it out. And his soldering skills are way like, you know, if I would have a mic microscope. It would help. Let's see. So here we see LED 2. And his notch is facing upward. My notch is facing upward right. So the orientation of the LEDs seems to be correct. Which basically means there is a shitty solar connection at some point. Um, or the level shifter is broken. So that's maybe, um, I mean, we can check for continuity. 
all right? So this one should be, I see here raw, this should be five volts. And that goes to this top corner here. Let's just, let me quickly get my multimeter and then let's just check continu continuity of, of those uh, of those LDs. Okay, right back. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Equipped with a multimeter. Let's see. So... I wonder why it's... I feel like my, my work area is darker than usual. I'm not quite sure why, why this is. But yeah, we have this like kind of shitty light here. So let's see. So if we put this here, this this beeps. Um, I think you can't hear it, but this this is continuity. This also means that the corner across the notch should be five volts. So if we push this here, this beeps as well. This beeps as well. This beeps as well. Okay, so we can assume that our five volt is running through. Um, which one is ground? I'm not quite sure which one is ground. But this one should be like grounded. Okay, so those two are both on ground. None of these are on ground. Oh! Well, there's LD. <laughs> um, those two are both on ground? Okay, so something isn't quite right with the LEDs. Oh man, this is very bright. Let me, let me unplug that. <laughs> ah, my, my screen is, is frozen again. This is so annoying. Like I never had this problem. Okay. I, I need to pull it down again. One second. Okay, so um, so this then seems to be a signal issue, right? Because like we have kind of, kind of ground, um, and we have kind of Yeah, if I touch this pin, the LED turns on. Which is the pin next to the notch. But for this one, that's not the case. So it's only that one. And this one has a continuity with ground, the pin. And this one... Oh, interesting. <laughs> so those two work. So it's it's definitely a signal issue. I mean, we have four pins, right? Like one is power, one is ground, one is signal in, one is signal out. Hmm. 
most likely I just didn't solve the, the LEDs correctly. But this one has continuity with ground as well. And it's like the one next to the notch. Yeah, they all have continuity with ground. I mean, we could measure the resistance of this resistor. I guess, I mean, I'm not sure. Well, this is not 10 kilo ohm. Yeah, I'll also show you what I'm seeing, but uh, if I measure over this resistor, I get 4, 10, 13, 15 ohm. This should be 10 kilo ohm, if I remember correctly. So maybe the resistor here is not correct. Hmm. I mean, my top candidate is still like this uh, logic level shifter. Okay, so I'm wondering whether the third one then isn't soldered properly. Because if I would do the same here, this doesn't do anything. sure what to do to be honest like something's wrong but i don't have the knowledge to figure out what is wrong so this resistor is kind of odd this resistor is a bit odd Like one of the two is most likely wrong. It could also be that this LED is incorrectly soldered. And then basically the signal is kind of like blocked. Given that this is also not working, like I'm, we can just try to reflow the LED. Because like if those two are working, this one should also work if I do the same. Unless it doesn't have power, but I mean, there's no continuity over the capacitor. I'm not sure if that should... And this is so bright, like, to look in those LEDs. Yeah, this one has continuity. This one does not. This one doesn't... This one has no continuity. This one has, this one does not. This one doesn't have. Um, looking at the board layout, so the, I mean, I'm not quite sure where, what this capacitor is doing. How is this connecting? I just lack understanding. Okay, so let's reflow this one, this one. Oh, so we reflow this one, this one, and this one, and this one LD. 
and let's see what happens. Having those knobs on now is not making making that easier. Okay, so let's try reploying them and um, let's see if that works. If not, I would say we stop the stream at this point um, because I'm kind of losing patience for that a bit. Um, and it's not a, not a good thing. <laughs> I just add a little bit of flux to everything we want to reflow. Okay. Let's quickly switch the lens so you see what I do. Hmm, that's, uh, I was more optimistic. Oh wait, this one was working, so I <laughs> shouldn't have touched this one. Those knots uh, on the other side are a bit annoying. Okay. I mean, let's see. I don't think something changed. See if we can do a magic trick again. Nope, now it's completely dead. Okay, I have continuity now on one pin. Which is the one in the corner. And the one across is... The one across is with 5 volt. So 
I mean, now we have at least that. So this is ground. This one is ground and this one is uh, 5 volt. Uh, which means, I assume looking at the board, this one is data in. And this one is most likely data out. So this is most likely going over here and then here. So this is data. Yeah, data in is like next to the ground. That's why when I like playing around on this one, I got like something to happen, which no longer is the case. Okay, like the encoder still works, so I have to turn the, the volume changes. Like this LD is a little bit like off center. Like it's a bit sketchy ground connection. But ground is fine, so this shouldn't be the issue. Let's still add a little bit of, of solder here. Yeah. Mm. Let's quickly check, do we ha now have a continuity over this one? No, we still don't. Like, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the case. But now we don't have continuity over any of them. So at least it's, it's consistent. <laughs> um, could have been that like they need to be charged? I have no clue from, of electronics. Well, I guess we don't have RGB. Like none of the pins have continuity with ground on the on the level shifter. This one is five volt. But nothing nothing for ground. Which is a bit confusing. I assume G here is ground. Yeah, something here is a ground connection. Seems to be the one in the middle, not the one on the bottom. Maybe they're the same. I'm not sure if they are. Okay, I don't know. Uh, that's a short answer, I don't know. It could be that's a level shifter, but I don't have any spares. Oh, that sucks. I mean, I, I don't want to continue building that unless I find out what's the issue. Because once I start, once I start putting up all the all the keycaps and stuff, like fixing this gets even harder. I am I'm fairly. Unless I now broke something while reflowing, like I'm very certain the issue is here somewhere. 
but yeah, I don't know how I could figure out where. So, let's quickly try to reload the resistor. I'm not sure if we did that, but. Interesting. Ah, I didn't know it. But there's a, a mode to test diodes. So let's at least check this. So all the diodes should be in in this direction. So this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Okay, at least all the diodes are in the right, uh, right direction. So, yeah. I mean, worst case, this one doesn't have L LEDs. That would be a shame, but would be... Would be, uh, okay. Well, okay, then I guess... Um, let, me, let me sleep on that, and let me see if I... Find a solution. Like the, the question is now if I replace the level shifter or something. Like I only have three level shifters basically left after I destroyed one and I don't get off the other one. Um so if I remove this one, like one of the other two I want to build three. So one of the other two won't have LDs. Um Yeah, I, I just don't know how to debug that. That's my problem. Like, I, I don't understand how it works entirely. Like, I know the four pins or whatever. Um, and I don't know, like, how to verify that this component is correctly soldered. Because I, I don't quite understand where the stuff comes from and goes to, and yeah. So... That's a bit annoying. Like I'm not really happy with that. <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, but I guess that is what it is now. It is what it is. Cool. Well. Oh. It's showing up on the on the on the Mac. Uh, we can control the volume already. So yeah, worst case, not all these. Let's do a quick sneak peek um, how this will look later. Um, well, quickly change the lens again, and then we we call the day. So basically, um, we have this case here, and this will go in here. And then from the bottom, there's this transparent section here, which will go on and press the snap fit. 
So it's basically how it will later be in here. And then basically the keys um, go in from the top and then we would solder them from, from the back. And this basically mounts this, this PCB then in, in the case. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, and then the LEDs should have like shine light through here, but I guess uh, we won't have LEDs. <laughs> Let's see. Cool. Um, this heck, is there Discord for the product to get support? Uh, no, it's like it's super small. It's just one dude. Like I, I can. Uh, I'll comment on YouTube under the video and see if he responds. But um, yeah. That's that's how it is. Yeah, like I'm I'm not sure what the problem is. That's that's my problem. Like like I don't know how to uh, narrow down what it could be. Um, yeah. Too bad. Um, cool. Yeah. Then uh, on on that note, um, thanks for tuning in, and um, yeah, I hope it was at least something entertaining. Or <laughs> somewhat entertaining. Uh, and next time, um, less soldering. Um, and yeah, we'll try to, to like make nice keycaps. Um, I have this Python script that we need to tune a bit uh, to, to, to align it properly and everything. And then we will do some multicolor printing on the V0. So it will be fun. Cool. Then, yeah, again, thanks for tuning in and see you next week. Bye.